الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأحبابه وأتباعه أجمعين أما بعد ما دير بلافل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته an ayah that is appropriate in the subject that we're talking about. And every ayah is appropriate in its own ways, but there's some ayahs that sometimes strike you and they stand right before you. And that's the miracle of the book of Allah. First, you all know why we start always with the book of Allah. Because Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith that is Sahih said, hadith rawah al-imam Muslim fi sahihihi and rawah al-imam al-nasai bi isnad al-sahih. He says, inna asdaq al-hadith kitab Allah ta'ala wa khayr al-hadhi hadhiu Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallama wa sharra al-umuri muhdathatuha. Tayyip. There's an ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yas'alu, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Yas'aluhu man fi s-samawati wal-ard, kulla yawmin huwa fi sha'n. Yas'aluhu man fi s-samawati wal-ard. Everyone, the meaning of the ayah, everyone who's in heavens and on earth, is asking Allah or asks Allah. Wait, there are things asking Allah in heavens, fi samawat? Yes. And the malaika are fi samawat, as you all know. And there are things fi samawat. But Allah says, yas'aluhu man fi samawati wal ard. All those or those in on earth, on earth and in heavens, they ask him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before we can go into any topic, I always want to say, look, if we don't know who we are and where we're going, where did you come from? Where are you going? Who are you? Who are you? Now, I don't want you to give me your name or what you do. Today, you ask people, who are you? They tell you what they do. Or they tell you where they live. They tell you what where they come from. All that stuff doesn't really matter. Who really are you as a human being? As a believer in Allah Ta'ala and the glorious messenger of His, the final of prophets, alayhi salatu wasalam. Who are you? Where do you fit? What's your message? You, we're going to live whatever how, may Allah grant you all long lives and healthy long lives. Let me say this, healthy long. May Allah grant, grant you all healthy long lives. Like in how long do we live? How long do you want to live? No matter how long you live, it's the same anyway eventually. Uh, it's the same. It's the same if you are not with Allah. There's an Arab poet he says, الْمَرْءُ رَهْنُ مَصَائِبٍ لَا تَنْقَضِي حَتَّى يُوَارَ جِسْمُهُ فِي رِمْسِهِ He says that the human being, as, once, as soon as you're born, you are now welcome to the dunya, right? Dunya means what? Lower form of life. Dunya versus ulya. Dunya is the lower form of life. So welcome to the lower form of life. And that by definition means what? Difficulties, hardships, sadness, sorrow, challenges, pain, struggle. I'm going to say this, bitter sweetness. You all know what I'm talking about. Bitter sweetness. Ajib Allah Ta'ala and His creation. Yani, the ajab of the qudra of Allah Ta'ala and His creation. How you have bitter, He gives you bitter sweetness. Sweet bitterness. 
to show you. But we want to make our dunya Jannah. You're sadly mistaken. This is the wrong address. Sir, you've made the wrong turn. This dunya is not the akhirah. It's never going to be. Do as you will. It's never going to be the akhirah. It's never going to be Jannah. If you take it as dunya, the lower form of life, you prepare for the higher form of life. But if you don't understand that this is the lower form of life, and it's a limited lower form of life as well, you may miss out on a lot in the higher form of life. This poet says, Al-mar'u rahnu masa'ib. The human being, the minute they're born, is hostage to difficulties and challenges that are endless. You finish from one, you get a bigger one. You overcome a bigger challenge, you say, now I can breathe. All of a sudden, few more weeks, few more months, few more years, some other thing. You get over a painful experience only to see another thing that happens. That's just what it is. He says, As long as you're a human being living in the lower form of life, which is dunya, you are hostage. He uses the word hostage. So in other words, as if you really, really cannot get out of it. To pains and challenges and difficulties that will never end until you finish. He says, He says, if Allah makes you mu'ajjal, mu'ajjal means He grants you long life. How long you live? Like Nuh alayhi salam. You live 900 years, 1000 years. 1100 years, whatever it is. Huh? How many you want to live? He says, if Allah gives you long life, you will taste the bitterness of death, not one time, many, 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 many times. The loved ones you have will die one after another before your eyes. You will taste that bitterness. Anyone you get attached to, attached to, will leave you before you leave. You will taste death so many times, you would wish that you were dead long ago. I, I don't, you know, let's just, let's done, let's get done with this. He says, that's if Allah gives you a long life. But if Allah does not give you a long life, takes your life short, You look, my nafs, Ya Allah, why you didn't give me enough time? I, I did not do this yet, I want to do this, I want to do that. It seems that both ways the human being is not happy. And therefore, looking for happiness in the lower life or lower form of life can only be with one thing. Allah. Really. Money makes things easier. Doesn't necessarily grant you happiness. Power may make things easier. Doesn't necessarily make things happier. The only way you can navigate through this lower form of life, which has lots of good things. I'm not trying to sound, make, give you a pessimistic view of all things. No, no, no. There are lots of good. I always said bitter sweetness is really the key. Or sweet bitterness, whichever you like to look at it. But life actually, the lower form of life can be very, can be elevated to be very close to the higher form of life. Close, not there. If you are with Allah. And therefore the key is that we want to be with Allah. And therefore before we even talk about the whole subject, I have to ask you my usual question. How is your heart with Allah? How is your heart with Allah? You and yourself. How is your heart with Allah? Are you comfortable with Allah? Do you talk to Allah in your dua? Dua means you talk to Allah. That's what dua means. Or do you just talk about Allah? You don't talk to Him. In your salah, do you just read things or you talk to him? Do you say, 
when Bismillah in the name of Allah. Bismillah, Ya Allah, I am invoking your name. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Alhamdulillah. You're talking to him. Or do you just read things? The reason I have to ask this question is because where's your heart with Allah? Close to Allah? Far away from Allah? Where are you? Where do you belong? What's in your heart? Because regardless, you and whatever is in your heart in this lower form of life will come to an end. The only thing that will never come to an end is Allah. And if you attach yourself to Allah Ta'ala, that's how you move from this lower form to a higher form. And that's why Allah says here, He opens the door for all of us to be close to Him. يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The direct translation would mean everyone on earth and in heavens ask Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What, what is He telling you? Everything on earth and in heavens, ask him. So you ask him. But asking him means what? He's opening a door for you to be close to him. To rely on him. To implore him. To beg him. And that's why, يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and that's why you need your heart. Because you see, Allah as a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ashabihi wa azwajihi wa sallam said fi sahih al-imam muslim inna allaha la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa la ila ajasadikum wa la kin yanzuru ila qulubikum Allah does not look at your bodies, what you're wearing, what your title may be, where you live, what kind of degree you have, how much money you make, all that stuff Allah does not. Allah looks at your heart. Because the journey to Allah is a journey of the heart in the first place. Not that of the body or mind as much. That's why when he opened the door, why do you think the Nabi Wasallam said in the authentic hadith, الدُّعَاءُ هُوَ الْعِبَادَةِ Or another Hassan hadith, الدُّعَاءُ مُخُّ الْعِبَادَةِ الدُّعَاءُ is ibadah. الدُّعَاءُ is the heart of ibadah. Why do you think the Prophet Wasallam is telling you this? What is dua? Dua is talking to Allah. He's telling you that's ibadah, that's the heart of ibadah. Remember, talk to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first thing you want to say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, to realize who you are and who he is. To realize at the end of the day, no matter how big you are, you're on this earth. And this earth is part of a huge solar system. To go to Mars takes you a lot of years, huh? Just to travel. And the whole Milky Way anyway. And you know I'm not talking about the chocolate. You know, there, I, do you have a chocolate Milky Way here also in South Africa? Yeah, yeah. I remember when we were kids we had to have that. Along with Mars, so I'm talking about that. There's relation. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad like and this whole Milky Way is very small and this whole or the whole I'm sorry the whole solar system is very small in the whole Milky Way galaxy which is how millions of light years and then the whole Milky Way is almost insignificant in this other big, bigger system and bigger system and bigger system and bigger systems and Allah is the creator of all you may be big as a creation but you cannot be that big of a creation maybe we should start using a microscope rather than a, or a telescope rather than a microscope then maybe we see things through a telescope and then we make some analogy and qiyas but oftentimes we look with a microscope but you can be big if you are with Allah that's the only way you can make it if you are with Him. But if you have everything in the world and you don't have Him, if you did not find Him in a way that's suitable to Him, obviously, 
and you have the whole world with you, you have indeed lost. And if you have found him, you have found everything you need. Yes'aluhu man fis samawati wal ard. Kulla yawm. If we want to stop there. Everyone on earth and in heavens ask him every day. And he grants people every day. And he gives to people every day. And he opens for people every day. You are not calling someone who is absent. You are not calling on someone who does not hear or see. But you're calling on someone who is present and he hears all and sees all subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he commanded you to call him by his name. Call him, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. Ya Al Quran tells you when the people in the ship and the ship started moving and shaking in, in the ocean and the winds start coming, the people on the ship they started saying, Ya Allah. Huh? The captain is important, but Ya Allah is the one who will save. Those who used to be lost in the whole wide desert. And when people are lost in the desert, it means it's imminent death. Because there's no water. And it's swerved from the way because of the sandstorms and all these things. They were calling Ya Allah. When disasters and difficulties and diseases happens and death comes, those people who are afflicted, they call Ya Allah. When the doors in front of you all close, every single thing you try to get, and the doors close, and the curtains also shut in the faces of those who are begging, they say Ya Allah. And that's where you need to be. When everything that you have, all hopes, are extinguished and exhausted and there is no more rope that you can hold on to. Ya Allah is what you need to hold on to. If the whole earth becomes so narrow, despite its vastness on you, you call on to you, Ya Allah. To Him, Yas'adul Kalimu Tayyib. Your good words are elevated to Him. Your dua is raised to him your sincere dua and calling is raised to him your innocent and loving tears and crying that you do out of loving him and wanting to be close to him and out of repenting from all our deeds to him that also goes to him when you extend your hand in the dua and you ask Allah to give you and when your eyes are asking and when your heart is asking that goes to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not the dua, it was never lip service. Lip service doesn't do it. When your ruh, when you mention him, and you mention his name, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your soul calms, and your heart finds tranquility, and your uh, sort of calmness befalls upon you and his love envelops you and your yaqeen in him your faith in him settles you really realize what Allah said in his Quran Allahu latifun bi'ibadih Allah is kind unto his slaves but you need to be exposed to that kindness. He's kind. The question is not whether he's not kind with you. The question is, do you see his kindness? That's the question. All the names that you call him with, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names and his attributes, you realize that from him you imbibe or you take, you draw power, you draw wealth, you draw wisdom, 
you draw knowledge, you take it from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, he's the one, abhaka wa abka, Allah says, which means he's the one who made you laugh and he's the one who made you cry. So the one who made you cry can also make you laugh. If you are with him, he may change your cry into laugh and your sadness into happiness. But if you are with everything else, then obviously it's a problem. And therefore we seek refuge to Allah from relying on anything but Him and from seeing anything but Him and from realizing that happiness comes from anything else other than Him. He is the one who grants it. Not the money, not the power, not the wealth, not, not the health, not everything. If Allah grants you that closeness to Him or pleasure upon you that, that from Him that envelops you, what else do you want? Musa alayhi salam, Allah told him, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي Oh Musa, the meaning of the ayah, أَلْقَيْتُ I have, the meaning of the ayah would mean, I have thrown, like to throw something, I have thrown my love onto you. As if the love of Allah was thrown onto Musa and wrapped him up and enveloped him entirely in Allah's love. You, Ya Musa, shall grow up under my direct care. And therefore, throw him in the river. You worried about throwing him in the river as, a, as an infant? Allah's love is enveloping him. What, which river can overtake that? Throw him to the river and send him to the palace of Fir'aun, the very enemy of Allah to be raised with care and love. Ajib. Remember the bitter sweetness? The enemy of Allah, Fir'aun, and in the heart of the enemy of Allah's Fir'aun, in his own palace, with his own direct special care, Musa Kaleemullah is being raised. The nur of Nubuwa is right there shining, and Allah is using his enemies as the tools. They think they fool Allah? It's, do you place your reliance on Fir'aun and his might and his power? Or you place your yaqeen like the mother of Musa did on Allah? That's where it is. Therefore, the first thing is, be happy. Be happy. Be happy. What I mean by be happy? Iman and good deeds are the secret. Iman and good deeds are the secret for happiness. If you have no Iman and no good deeds, your happiness is very transient. It's very short-lived. It's not going to last. You're gonna need, you're gonna be dependent on many things. Whatever makes you happy, you want to get higher dose. And the only thing that gives you actually reward on your investment is belief and good deeds. Notice Allah never just said, Alladina amanu, but said, Inna Alladina amanu wa amilu wat amilu. Not talihat, salihat, right? Did not do bad deeds, they did good deeds. There is no way. Don't let people tell you, especially nowadays with, with what we do, that as long as you say the kalima, you're good to go. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Indeed, the human beings at last, except who? At last. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ don't think that without amal salih, just a theological, theoretical utterance will suffice you for absolute and complete salvation. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa tells Fatima, who is better than Fatima? Al-Zahra radiallahu anha. Ya Fatima tu'amali. 
Oh, Fatima, do good deeds. Ya Bani Abdul Muttalib. Oh, sons of Abdul Muttalib. Go do good deeds. Ya Abbas bin Abit bin Abdul Muttalib. Oh, Abbas, go do good deeds. Good deeds will save you in this lower life and in the upper one. Not only that, they will actually save your children. They will prevent evil from you because of your good deeds. Hadith Sahih. You all know Hadith Sahih. Where the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, Dawu mardakum bis sadaqa. If you have people who are sick or have a disease, heal them through sadaqa. Ajeeb. Good deed, Ya Rasulullah. Sadaqa I give. Ya with the of healing. What does this have to do with this? That's not your job. Do good deeds. Yes. They will make you happy. I'll tell you why. Allah Ta'ala created this universe entirely based on the law of justice and reciprocation. Everything. Why? Where do I get this from? Quran. I'll give you the ayah. Everything you do, good or evil, everything you do, whether good or bad, will never remain unreciprocated. Let me say it again. Nothing you do, good or bad, will remain unreciprocated. Doesn't matter, you cannot get away with anything. If you think you're getting away with anything, you have a problem in the belief in Allah, the Creator who knows everything and is just. There is nothing you can get away with. Everything you do, good or evil, will not remain unreciprocated. If you do good, it's going to be reciprocated. In the dunya, before the akhirah. Let me repeat, in the dunya, before the akhirah. If you don't see that, maybe you need to change your glasses of the heart. So you see. Look at Fisul Al-Kahf, what does he say? Al-Khidr alayhi salam, when he built the wall over the treasure of those in that village where they denied them even food. Please, you're reading Surah Al-Kahf, obviously. He says, وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا Why Musa alayhi salam al-Kaleem says to Al-Khidr, why are you building this wall? Uh, you're building this home now. We came to this village to ask them for food. They denied us even food. And now you're making a free construction company for these people? Building them their home? Al-Khidr in his explanation, في سورة Kaf, please read it. He says, I, under this home that's collapsing is a treasure, lots of money. And Allah ordered me to build it, to construct it, because the owner of this house has died. And he left two young orphans. They're too young now. So I need to build this, construct this house. So allowing the young children to grow up and be mature so they can claim it. Once they claim it, they'll find their treasure. The reason I did that, Allah commanded me to do this. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا Their father was a good man. We don't know about the children what they will be. That's not, the Quran didn't even talk about them. Allah sent Al-Khidr and Musa, Al-Kaleem, Al-Khidr alayhi salam, both, to build a home for two orphans who, that this home has a treasure underneath it. Why? Because the father of those two orphans was a good man. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ What was their father? Saliha. You want to secure your future? Be with Allah. Allah grants you everything. Your children, you don't have to worry and stress. You have to worry a lot if you're not doing good deeds. Yeah, of course. But that worry, that worry is not going to do you any good either. In this dunya, you know this dunya is short. Short. No matter how long you live, use it. Use your time. Choose a project you like to be part of. Something for Allah, not just for your own desires. So that you actually spend, invest some time for Allah. 
something good to serve the creation, to serve the creator. Do good, ya akhi, even if there's no reciprocation. Don't look for recognition because you're going to be sadly mistaken and disappointed and frustrated. Your relation has to be with Allah, not with the creation. Be happy. How do you be happy? Choose a path in this life. A path that takes you to Allah. Don't be always running from the creation to the creation. You're running in circles. And that circle is vicious. And the creation doesn't appreciate. The creation is ungrateful. We're ungrateful. We're ungrateful to Allah, let alone to the creation. I mean, come on. قَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورَ Allah says, few of my slaves are grateful. لا إله إلا الله. شوف حتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and our mother, عائشة الصديقة رضي الله عنها, حديث الصحيح, you all know it. Our mother Aisha is not your average woman. With all the respect to our women, we love them all. But الصديقة عائشة, يعني فقيها, عالمة, صحابية, not any Sahabi, that's the household. Yani, how close can you be to the Prophet ﷺ? She sees him praying and she, her heart, Ya Rasulullah, why are you doing this to yourself? And he tells her, Ya Aisha, Afala uhibbu an akuna abdan shakura. Ya Aisha, shouldn't I love to show my gratitude to my Lord? Few are those who are like that. Therefore, think and thank. Think and thank. What do you mean think and thank? Think. Think about Allah, what Allah has given you and thank Him. Think and thank. Key. The ulama of Tazkiyah, they always say which is better, love or gratitude? What's better, to love Allah Ta'ala or to show gratitude? They say gratitude. How come? They say real love is not for me. It's, it's a long thing. Usually when people love, they expect reciprocation. Gratitude, you expect no reciprocation. Thank you. Thank you. Like this. I, I, I don't, you don't have to thank. I, thank you. Don't say anything. And that's why Allah Ta'ala in the Quran says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ if you show your gratitude to me, I will give you more and more. The ayah, the meaning of the ayah. And therefore, real shukr takes you to the maqam of mahabba, to the maqam of love. If you are thankful, really, genuinely, you are then in love. That's why think and thank. You know, it's not, would you like to have all the money in the world but not have your eyes? All the money, millions. Here, a million dollars if someone was to offer, but take your eyes. Thank him. What do you want? You, you have two buildings in town and not have your ears? Think and thank. Thank. Thank him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at people who don't have as well. Look at what he gave you. Look at that every single day we display public disobedience to him. Every single day. Publicly we disobey him. Flagrantly we disobey him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah forgive us. Yet he continues to show his kindness and forgiveness upon you. That by itself requires thanking, Habibi. That by itself that, Ya Allah, I am such a abd, such a slave that's ungrateful. And you're teaching me how to be close to you by your glory and grace. And by, you, by your giving me even more, though I'm not worthy. That requires thanking. It's a moment of truth. That we have to put ourselves in. You want to exchange your hands with the mountain of Uhud in gold? Give you a mountain of Uhud, make it gold. 
a whole mountain and you have no hands. You want to do that? Who wants to do that? It's crazy. It's insane. Thank him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank him while you can. And what I mean by thanking him, you understand, I'm not saying thank him with your lips. Allah says, Ihmalu ala Dawood shukra. Let your limbs translate your thankfulness. Let your eyes translate your thankfulness. Let your heart translate your thankfulness. Let your feet translate your thankfulness. Let your hands translate your thankfulness. Be thankful genuinely, not lip service. Thankfulness is not just saying Alhamdulillah and that's it. Thankfulness is a state of gratitude. All of you that encompasses you entirely. Don't be amongst those who Allah said, يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا They know the ni'mah of Allah. They know what Allah has given them. But they're in denial of it. Allah said in the meaning of what Allah said in the Quran. Don't be in denial of it. وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ in your nafs, what Allah has given you, don't you see? Think and thank. Very important. Then, another thing, don't live in the past. Don't live in the past. The biggest mistake you can do is living the past. I'm not saying don't learn from the past, but don't live the past. Don't live your past. If sad or good or so, everything is going to happen. But don't live your past. It's a nation that has gone. There's, you can get everything back. You can get health back. You can get wealth back if you lost it. You can get love back. You can even get your iman back. There's one thing you can never get back. Time. Time you can never, ever get back. Every second that clicks, you can never reclaim that second at all. No way, no matter who you are. Done. Anything else you can get back. Even like I said, even your Iman. You, you lost your Iman, you can regain. You. As long as you have time, you can regain your Iman. You don't have time, and once time passes, there is no way you can reclaim it. You will never get any minute you lose or you pass. Never. Never. If I can tell you to be stingy in anything, time. Time is the most valuable thing after Iman that Allah has given you. Living in the past means you are not thinking, you're not experiencing or living your present, and you are not planning for your future. You should learn from the past. You should never live the past. The past has lots of painful things. Lots of them. Lots of them. But you can't live your past. Your past may have lots of painful experiences. You're not alone. You can't live your past. Whatever happened, happened and it's gone. It's time now to live your present. If the whole jinn and ins and all the human beings will come, they can never bring that past to undo or do it differently. If you want to change your life, you start now. Forget the past. If it's bad, ask forgiveness. And if it's good, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point in the dunya is that you're moving forward. You're not really going backward. Allah did not ask you to change your past. Let me say it again. Allah did not account you to change your past, because he knows you can't. But he did account you to change your present and future. That you can. What happened if I've done evil in the past? Serious things. Don't worry, there's a point. 
And there's a chance. What's the redemption? أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُوا اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ If you are with Allah, Allah tells us in the Qur'an in this ayah, those people who are with Allah, the meaning of the ayah, Allah will switch their evil deeds into hasanat, good deeds. Yes. If you're with him, he will change your bad deeds into good deeds. And if it's a pain, he will change it into lasting pleasure. That pain that was for a short time, Allah will change it to an everlasting pleasure with no end if you're with him. Change the bitter into sweetness, not the sweetness into bitter. Therefore, from this, live your day. What does that mean? Hadith ibn Umar, if you are in the morning, don't expect to make it till the night. And if you are at night, don't expect to make it till the morning. He said that's too drastic. It's the reality. You're living now, just this moment. Right now you're living. Make the best out of it. Don't expect that you'll settle things in the evening. You might not make it till the evening. Settle from now. Be comfortable with Allah. You have to because you might go any minute. All of us might go any minute. Be comfortable with Him. Settle your accounts with Him. And also with others. Tell them you love them. It's okay. Go to your loved ones and tell them you love them. Go to people, your, the, Muslim, the whole ummah. Tell them you love them. I love all of you for Allah's sake. You only have the moment you live. You don't have the next minute. Don't abuse it. I said it's never going to come back to you. It's never going to come back to you. And therefore, this is your day. Your life is your day. That's what your life is. Now, it doesn't mean you don't plan for the future. And you don't, if Allah gives me life, I'm going to do this and this and this and I better myself. Yes, absolutely. But realize that if you live in the morning, you might not make it to the night. So therefore, live your moment. Maximize the potential of your day. Maximize it as if it's your last. Be happy with it. You're settled. You don't have storage of things that are still tied up and tangled and all these things. Settle all that stuff. Your istighfar with Allah will do these things for you. You're pleading to Allah and crying at night and doing tahajjud and pleading and pleading with Him, imploring Him to forgive you. Will settle these things with you once and for all. Your salah in that day—it's your day. Take life day at a time. Make sure your salah is good. Make sure what you say is good. Make sure you, you have the best plans, meaning intention, niyyah. Ya Allah, if I live, this is what I'm going to do. It's very important. I'm going to live today, so therefore I want to better my heart today. I'm going to live today, I don't know if I'm living tomorrow, and therefore I'm going to be good to those who love me and I love. Today, today, I'm going to live today only, only Allah knows if I'm living tomorrow, and therefore I'm going to be noble to those who are not noble with me. Today, not tomorrow. I want to live today, and if Allah gives me that time, so I'm going to be of benefit and use to the others. I'm going to try to benefit the ummah. I'm going to try to benefit humanity in the best I can. That is very important. There is a rule I always say in our deen, and that's by not only the texts, but by experience. 
You give, you live. You don't give, it doesn't matter if you're breathing, you don't live. Giving, I'm not talking about money. Giving your time, giving your charity, giving your heart, giving your efforts, giving something, give so you can take. If you don't give, you will not take. Remember reciprocation. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in the hadith that's Hassan, وَتَبَسُّمُكَ فِي وَجْهِ أَخِيكَ صَدَقَةً Your mere smile in the face of your fellow creature is an act of charity. What is he telling you? If you can't give anything, then the least you can give is a smile. That's giving and that's charity. That was, that's what he's telling you. And that's why your day is important. Make your day beautiful with Allah. Allah will make your life beautiful with Him. And that's very important. What that means, it doesn't mean that you don't plan for the future. No, you want to plan for the future. But you don't want to live in the future. Just like you don't want to live in the past, you don't want to live in the future. You don't want to live in a dream world. So you're missing out on your, on your present, which is the time that counts against you or for you. Plan for the future. Don't live the future. What does that mean? Yeah, that's what Allah says. الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْرَ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَاللَّهُ يَعِدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِنْهُ وَفَضْلًا Shaitan promises you poverty. So for example, an opportunity to give came. He say, no, I have to save it for the future. Now I'm not saying if you don't have anything, you know, that's for Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, maybe he, he gives everything, even if he doesn't have. But for us, uh, but a shaitan, Allah says, which means a shaitan comes and promises you poverty in the future. He makes you live a future he designs for you right away. He comes to you, what, what do you mean give? time or money or anything. No, he gives you a future immediately bleak. You're going to be stranded. You're going to not have any money. Why? What do you mean give? Wallahu ya'idukum maghfiratan minhu wa fadla. But Allah promises you if you believe in him, forgiveness and vastness. Don't let shaitan plan your life for you. Be with Allah today. And trust him. If you trust him, you think he's going to let you down? If you think so, you have no belief in him. If you trust Allah, do you think Allah will let you down? Absolutely not. Trust him. You've tried everything else. But you got to trust him with your heart, not with your lips. Lip service, you know, if I just tell you, I love you, lip service. Do you really like that? Do you accept that? Even from a human being, nobody accepts I love you lip service. And those who are married, you know this. If you tell your wife, I, your wife, I said life. That's true also, huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, right? Life, wife is your life, basically, let's face it. Right? So, uh, women are happy now, I hope. That's important. Well, you know, basically, effectively is what it is. You, have, you want to have a good, good life. <laughs> anyway. So if you tell your life, I love you, the first thing she's going to tell you what? Show me, don't just tell me. Actions speak louder than words, right? Show me, don't tell me I love you and you know you're, you're doing all these other things I don't like. Allah Ta'ala wants you to love Him and trust Him from your heart, not, from, well, not only with your lips. But in life will also you will find harsh, hateful people. That's normal. Look at them as people who are deprived of love. They didn't know Allah to be the most loving. They knew Allah only to be the one who punishes most. And they knew only the Jahannam aspect. They didn't realize there is the vastness of Jannah. And above Jannah and Jahannam both, 
there is the encompassing limitless vastness of Allah's love and compassion. They don't know these things. So there will always be people who are ignorant and hateful and harmful. Allah says, the slaves of Ar-Rahman, they walk easy on earth. They're, it's easy for them. When the ignorance slander them, they say, peace. See Another ayah Allah says, Yani, remember, Habibi. There are some people who slander Allah. There are some people who slander the Prophet ﷺ. Slandering Allah by what? ibn Adam Allah says, Sahih al-Bukhari hadith Allah is telling us in this hadith Qudsi, the son of Adam slanders me. How? Allah Ta'ala tells us, the son of Adam says that there is another one with me. People slandered the Prophet ﷺ. People slandered Sayyidina Isa until السلام, Jesus. Until now, people hate him. Some people at least. Moses, Musa السلام, Some people. Look. Those are, we're talking about the people, not Allah Ta'ala. Those anbiya are the best of people who walk on this earth. You think you're going to, how dare you even compare yourself to them? How dare you compare yourself? And they were slandered by the thugs and the ignorance and the deprived and the, you know all kinds of people. That's normal. Don't think it's abnormal. It's absolutely normal. In fact, for the people who are trying to go on the sunnah, that's part of inheriting the prophet's rank. You cannot inherit the rank as prophecy, but inherit him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as inheriting his ranking characteristics, meaning that are applicable to us. What that means is he was the most knowledgeable in Allah, but also there was people like Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl slandering him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for righteous scholars, they also inherit that slander by the Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab's of their time. That's part of the deal. You can't change that. Remember, the one who sits is sitting on the ground cannot really fall. If you're sitting on the ground, you can't really fall. People don't want to make someone fall that's sitting already on the ground. People, some who are ignorant may be upset of you because you may surpass them in health, in wealth, in knowledge, in piety, even in etiquette. So to them you are guilty. And this guilt, you're sinful in a sense to them. And this sin to them, no tawbah will erase it until you leave that which makes you distinguished and become like them. That's the only tawbah you have. Whatever it is, if you're wealthy, the only, that's a sin to them, and the only way that your repentance can be accepted is if you lose all your wealth and become like them. If you're knowledgeable, if you become ignorant like them, that's the only tawbah. If you have etiquette and adab and akhlaq, as if you become akhlaqless like them. If you have ilm, they want you to become ignorant like them. And that's the only way they would accept your tawbah, nothing else. Like the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith when he went to the mountain of Uhud. Right? Remember when he went to the mountain of Uhud? And he was with him, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, wa Umar. Wa Uthman, wa Ali, right? Remember that hadith? And Uhud started shaking. And the Prophet ﷺ told Uhud what? Sit still, O Uhud. On top of you there's a Prophet. On top of you there's a Prophet. 
So be on top of the mountain. Don't worry about these things. You can't change people. You cannot close people's or seal people's mouth. People always reflect their inner essence. Always. What people say is a reflection of their own nature. If their nature is tayyib, good, all they can reflect is good. And if their nature is khabith or vile, all they can render is khabith. Simple as that. Try to make sure that you purify your inner so it becomes always good and all you generate is good. You can't change people around you. But what you can change is those you are around. You can't change those around you. Allah did not give you that power. But you can change those you are around. And the least you can change is yourself. And that's what's important. If you want to be loved by all, I have news for you. It ain't gonna happen. Why? Habibi, the Anbiya themselves were not loved by all people. The, the big Anbiya, the Anbiya of Allah, I mean, those who Jibreel came to them, who Israfil came to them, who, who the angel of this, they were serving, and they, you know? I mean, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his home was like uh, the landing uh, strip for the, for the Malaika. Just one landing, one taking off, one landing, one taking off. Huh? Still, still people did not love him, all of them. Still Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl talked about him. And Abu Lahab was his uncle. Allah says, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab. He didn't say, Tabbat yada Abdul Uzza. That's his name. Allah did not tell you, Tabbat yada Abdul Uzza. Because if had he told you that, it would have meant that only Abdul Uzza falls under this category. But Allah told you, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab. Everyone who is like him, he will be doomed and cursed. Don't let these people who have so much hate and evil inside ruin your inner side. It's not worth it. Be good to all, even if they're not good to you. My father, Rahmatullah, used to always say, son, if you do good to all, whether they're good or not good to you, if they're good to you, then you've done good to those who are worthy of receiving good. And if they're not good to you, you are worthy of doing good. Because it's not, respect, it's not about them. It's about you. They don't define you. You define you. That's what Islam wants you to do. Another thing I want, tell me the time, Mawlana, so I need the time. Ten minutes? Important thing is, don't expect thanks and gratitude and recognition from others. Let me say it again. I don't care what relationship you have with people, whether it's partnership, whether it's spousal, whether it's whatever. It's important to do so, but don't expect it. Why? Do it for Allah. If you do it for Allah, Allah will reward you whether people thank you or don't thank you. If you do it anticipating people's recognition, you're going to be very sadly dis disappointed. And very sad as well. When you are on this dunya for a Rabbani project, not an insani project. In other words, you're in this dunya to fulfill the mandate that's Rabbani that Allah gave you to be a good human being, to believe in Him, to believe in His Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to love them, to love doing good. That's your Rabbani project and assignment. Don't replace it with an insani, a human being project. Don't low, don't go that. A human being project you anticipate. If you do good, they thank you. 
or they realize how much you sacrifice, or they realize how much pain you're having to go through. <laughs> Look, people don't even know how much the prophets they went through. And people, most people don't appreciate. Allah Ta'ala told us, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ most people don't believe that stuff. Most people are not like that. People are not going to appreciate, just so you know. If they do, great. But don't count on it. Do it for his sake. At home, if you're a husband or a wife, treat your spouse good, even if they don't treat you good. Not because they don't treat you good or they treat you good. Because when you treat them good, you're dealing with Allah, not with them. Do it for his sake. He sees all. He knows all. Don't worry. Just because people don't see it doesn't mean that Allah doesn't see it. Expect reward from him. Don't expect reward from them. Regardless who they are. Again, the focus is Allah Ta'ala, not the people. If you're focusing on the people, people are like me and you. We all have issues. But you are with Allah, Allah will perfect you. You're with the people, people will point out your imperfections. Big difference. If you're with Allah, Allah will perfect your imperfections. If you are with the people, people will always, the minute you disagree with them, will point out all your imperfections and will turn your perfections into imperfections. But Allah Ta'ala will turn your imperfections into perfections by His grace. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be with Him, He purifies you. Do it for Him. Your relationship in the first place as a human being independently is with Allah. Whether you're a father or a mother or a husband or a wife or whatever you are. Your relationship is with Allah, not with the people in the first place. Keep that relationship with Him. That's very important. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ أَغْنَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Look at this ayah, how profound. And they hated them. The Quran means in this ayah. Why? Because Allah and His Messenger أَغْنَاهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Made them independent because of only Allah and His Messenger's fadl and endowments and bounties on them. As if those people did not depend on other people to give them. They didn't depend on others and all these things. They depended on Allah and His Messenger. And because of that, they sought nothing except from Allah and His Messenger. Because of that, some people hated them. You're not dependent on me, you're not asking me, you're not... Be like them. Be like them. Be like the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yani in the sense of Sayyidina Ali wa Fatima wa Hassan wa Hussein When that Three days and they're having as you know in the tafsir they mention it They have no food The, the prophetic household Ali wa Fatima wa Hassan wa Hussein No food A man comes Now there's no food Ali went to work the whole day To get a loaf of bread of barley Barley bread. I don't know if any of you eat barley bread anymore. It's a bit rough. Huh? He worked the whole day. He eventually came with some barley and told the Sayyidah Fatima, why don't you make a bread out of it? She put some water, some salt, and grinding it, made some, some, some bread out of it. As, and they were fasting. They didn't have any food anyway. Might as well fast. At Maghrib time, Allahu Akbar, they're drinking water. The door is knocked. Ya ala bayt al wa mawdi' al risala wa manzil al wahya wa ukhtalaf al malaika. Faqeer. There's a faqeer. I am a faqeer. Give me something. I came to you. They took that bread, loaf of bread that they made. Well, Hassan and Hussein were like three and four years old. And they gave it to the man. And they drank, they broke their fast on water and intended fasting the next day. 
until Ali goes out and works the whole day so he can bring some barley so Sayyidah Fatima can grind it and make it a loaf of bread. Exactly what he did at Maghrib time breaking their fast. Is this the household, the prophetic household? This is Al Bayti Rasulullah? Yes, what do you want? He says, I am Yatim. I'm an orphan. I need some food. They took the loaf of bread they made and they handed it entirely to him just like the first day. And they broke their fast on water intending for the next day Siyam as well. And the third day the same thing happened at Maghrib time. Is this the prophetic household? Yes. He said, I am, I was imprisoned and I just came out. I don't have anything. Do you have any food for me? They take him. Allah says on their behalf, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ We are giving you this for the sake of Allah. لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شكورا. We do not anticipate a reward nor even a shukura, nor even shukran from you. This is for Allah's sake. Don't even say shukran. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We don't want you to reward us and we're not doing it so you get a shukran. We get a shukran from you. Be like that. Be like that, Allah Ta'ala knows what you're doing. And when people don't appreciate, Allah appreciates in the sense that He knows and He will reward That's in that sense. And therefore, what I am trying to tell you is, when you go out there and do good deeds for others unexpectedly, I call them random acts of kindness. Random. And just acts of kindness to anybody, Muslim, not Muslim, doesn't make, doesn't make a difference. When you do good deeds, Allah will open your heart for you. Allah will put nur in your heart by doing that good deed. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Didn't we comfort it? Didn't we comfort your heart? When you do a good deed, Allah Ta'ala will comfort your heart and will give tranquility. So that's very important for you. The very important thing also is that, like I said at the beginning, choose a project for your life. Choose a project. What, what do you want to do? What do you want? Okay, all these things, but what do you want to do for Allah? What do you want to do for your deen? Be busy in something. Don't kill your time. You can't get your time back. Remember we talked about that. And therefore, don't be a blind imitator of anybody. Islam, my dear beloved, came to empower you, not to make, not to give you the sheep mentality. Islam came to make you all powerful people, to make you reach and maximize your potential, not just treat your potential, but maximize it. Not blind Im imitation. Ask. You have the right to ask about everything. You have the right to get right answers for everything based on the book and the sunnah. Empower yourself. Don't be a blind imitator. Ask questions. There should be no question off the table. Never. Not in our deen. Every question has an answer. The only authority is that of Allah and His Messenger. That's the authority. Everybody else can be right or wrong. Everybody else, Imam Malik said that. Everybody else can be right and can be wrong. Allah Ta'ala in His book and Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Azwajihi Wa Ashabihi Wa Sallam in His prophetic, authentic prophetic sunnah. That's safe and saving. Everything else we agree or disagree, well, that's no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Don't let anyone tell you it's a big deal. No big deal. The deen is the deen of Muhammadun Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ask and demand answers from the book and the sunnah. 
Empower yourself. Why? Why am I saying this? So you can be close to Allah and His Messenger. You don't need intermediaries. Scholars help you understand what Allah said and what His Messenger said. They don't stand between you and Allah. Scholars are not, ought not to stand between, between you and the Messenger. Scholars ought to tell you what the Messenger said and push you towards Him. That's what scholarship does. Don't erect idols. We have no idols here in Islam. It's important. You want to have a relationship with the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yourself, yourself on your own. You want to be close. Ya Rasulullah, I'm doing this. I'm drinking on three levels because I am tasting the sweetness of your Sunnah with me. Ya Allah, I am saying good words to people who are not good because you asked me to say to be good. Because you have been good to me. You have to have that bond with the kalam of Allah and the kalam of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Otherwise, you're absent. It's a, third, it's a third thing. You have to establish a relationship with Allah and a relationship with His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very important. Allah loves you. He's Al-Wadud. Most loving. That's what it means. Al-Wadud means the most loving. Shouldn't you exchange love for love? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa loves you. He knows, he knows that we're going to do wrong things. Don't worry. He, doesn't, he knows that we're, infa- that we're not infallible. We are all fallible. We make mistakes. He knows these things. He knows that no one is infallible but the anbiya. So he knows we're going to make mistakes. But he loves you. He loves you. He sent you his love throughout the centuries. That now you're hearing that Oh, the Prophet ﷺ said, he loves me. He loves you. Shouldn't you love him back? He called you brothers. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers? He said, no, no, no. You are my companions. But the brothers, are, my brothers are those who come after me. They believe in me though they haven't seen me. I yearn to see them. There's love that's coming to you and surrounding you. You've got to be there. And you have to establish that relationship directly with the Prophet ﷺ. Directly. That he's in your heart, that you love him, that you have a relationship with him through your uh, tasbihs or through your salawat on him wasallam. Another thing I want to say before I finish. There's qada and qadar as well. That's part of your iman. وَمَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ Everything that happens is qada and qadar. So remember that as well. Yeah. Remember what they said, قَلَّنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing will happen to us except that which Allah decreed upon us. What are you going to do to me? Whatever, the worst you can do to me is, would be that which Allah has already decreed upon me. So go ahead and do whatever you want. You have to remember that there's things in this world are beyond your control. Their pains and sufferings, etc., etc., are beyond your control. Do the best you can, but it's, when it's beyond you, it's beyond you. It's just, that's what it is. You have to deal with the reality. And that you submit to what Allah Ta'ala is qadar and try to do the best you can at the same time. Submitting doesn't mean you don't do the best to prevent all evil. You do. But you also realize that sometimes things will overpower you. And bad things will happen to good people. Allahumma salli ala al-Mustafa.